Hey guys, welcome back to our channel. Today I have a tutorial for you guys on this blown out braid out that I recently did and I love it. So let's just go ahead and hop right into it. So I am starting out with freshly washed hair and I deep conditioned as well the night before. So I will have a full list of all the in shower products that I used in the description box for you guys. So the first leave-in product that I'm gonna be using is one of my faves. This is the Redken Extreme Anti-Snap Leave-In Treatment. This is a holy grail product for me. If you guys have been following Kendra and I for a long time, then you know we always use this whenever we blow our hair out. So I've been using this product for at least 10 years. I love it. So I did end up applying like five to six pumps of this on each side of my head before I went in with my next product, which is the Tresemme Heat Tamer Spray. This is another OG product for me. I've tried tons and tons of heat protectants, but this is still probably in my top three just because it's so lightweight and it gets the job done and it actually protects my hair without making it greasy or oily or anything. So this is just one of my faves at the drugstore. And after I've applied both of those products to each section of my hair, I'm just gonna be detangling my hair with this wooden comb. I've had this for a while. I think it's from Amazon but I love this comb. It actually works really well. At first I didn't think that it would because it's a smaller comb, but it's so thick that I just feel like it just tackles the tangles so fast. So you guys know the drill. Whenever I blow my hair out, I just like to go ahead and twist away each section so that it stays detangled. So I'm just gonna repeat this process throughout my entire head. By the way, please excuse my just woke up face. Like my face was still in bed and I was up. So yeah, I still look sleepy in this video at the beginning, so sorry about that. So when I blow dry each section, I like to do two subsections. So I just like to split each section into two, like I'm doing here, so half and half. And these sections are perfect for me to use my blow dry comb attachment. I love this thing. By the way, make sure you clean it. I just recently cleaned mine and it was so dirty. I just took a warm towel and went in between each comb part. I don't know how you say it, but I just went in between each one and it got all the gunk and old product residue out. Or you can use a warm Q-tip as well. These are the settings that I used. I use high speed, medium heat. So this is perfect for what I'm doing since I'm not like flat ironing my hair or anything. I didn't want it to be on high heat, so I just use medium heat. And then of course high speed, like I just said. By the way, I also wanted to mention, every time I use the comb attachment to blow dry my hair, I like to start from the bottom and work my way up. Kind of like as if you were detangling your hair because this just helps you avoid any extra tangles that you might have missed before or that might have formed when you put your hair up and took it back down. So I just like to work my way up. So starting from the bottom, working my way up. So just like as if you were detangling your hair like normal. Okay guys, so I'm wrapping this up. Please excuse my gray hairs. I need to dye my hair desperately. My roots need a touch up. Uh, but I'm going to go ahead and part my hair. So this is based on preference. I'm just doing a kind of middle kind of side part. So it's like more off to the left side. Well, you're right, my left. 
and I'm just gonna clip away each quadrant. So I'm just gonna section my hair off into four different sections and I'm gonna try to get them as even as possible because this is gonna ensure that your waves are around the same size so make sure that your sections are similar in size so i'm only going to do four sections because i noticed whenever i do a braid out the less sections i do the less frizz i have when i take it down so this is the styler i'm going to be using from curl days this is the creamy curl styler i love this stuff i also use this in my bantu not out tutorial so i'm going to be using about that much per section and I'm going to distribute that evenly throughout each section. And after I apply the product, I make sure I brush it through. Make sure you brush it through to make sure that it's evenly distributed. So you could do a French braid, but if you don't know how to do a French braid or to start out doing a French braid or Dutch braid, you basically want to bring the hair to the middle of the section. So like braid towards your face and start as close to your root as possible. So you can avoid like the straight top and then like the wavy middle. Um, so that's how you ensure that you get the waves to be as close to the root as possible when you take it down. So as you can see, I'm starting the braid as close to the scalp and I brought it to the middle of the section. So not the bottom of the section, you wanna start braiding from the middle of each section. So you can see how much space I have from the braid to my ear on the side and I just began braiding downward towards my face instead of on the side of my face. So this really helps you get more waves and less straightness at the root, if that makes sense. So this is just a technique that I found that is really, really helpful to make sure that most of the hair is wavy when you take it down. And when I get to the end, I'm gonna show you in a minute what I do. I like to twist my ends because that also helps the ends not get frizzy when you take it down. So I'm gonna slow it down when I do it next, but I'm doing the same thing I just did, evenly distributing the creamy styler to my hair from the roots to the ends. And I also add a little bit more to the ends as I get down to the ends as well, just like a little dab. And again, I'm gonna bring the whole section to the middle towards my face and begin braiding as close to the root as possible. So this is very helpful. Like I said, if you cannot Dutch braid or French braid or corn roll or nothing like that. <laughs> So this is very helpful, but I find that even if you do know how to French braid or Dutch braid, that the hair turns out better if you just do plaits like I'm doing because you have less frizz when you take it down. See, I'm starting in the middle. Make sure that you have that space in between your ear and where the braid starts. So just bring it forward. So start to braid forward. And having your head slightly tilted down is also gonna help you get as close to the root as possible as well. And I'm sure most of you know this, but if you get to a section where like in the front you have layers or you have shorter pieces, just add longer pieces of hair to the shorter pieces to make them even again so that you have an even amount of hair in each piece of hair of the braid as you braid down. I hope that made sense. <laughs> But if you braid your hair, then you know what I'm talking about. Like you get to a certain section and one of the pieces is slightly shorter than the other two pieces, just add from the hair next to it to make them even again. So I hope that made sense. So this is what I was talking about earlier. Once I get ready to get to the end of the braid, I like to stop braiding and then I like to begin twisting the hair because this helps to make the takedown so much easier and it helps you have less frizz at the ends because if you were to braid this a little bit thinness at the end, then it would make the hair a lot frizzier as you're taking it down. And I like to secure mine with an elastic rubber band. You don't have to do this if you don't want to. You can use a roller or something, but how I'm going to sleep, I can't use rollers. You'll, you guys will see in a minute, but I just prefer not to use rollers at the end. I just like to you know add a little bit more of the creamy styler to seal my ends. So with the back, it's kind of the same thing, but a little bit different. So with the back, I'm doing the same thing, adding my product, evenly distributing to the entire section. And you want to brush up. So after I add my product, I'm going to brush up. So I'm bringing the hair up to the middle, as you can see. 
so I'm not braiding from the nape. You want to brush upward. This also helps with volume when you take it down as well. So as you can see, I'm brushing my hair up at like a, what is that, 90 degree angle? I was not good at geometry, so do not quote me on that, but you want to braid from the middle of the section just like you did with the first two pieces. So I'm braiding from the middle of the section. I'm not braiding from the nape of the section. This also helps to avoid breakage around your edges as well um, so because those are typically the thinner parts of your hair. This is the Brio Geo Style and Treat mousse. This was actually my first time using this mousse because I have used mousse before on braid outs and I just find that they make the braid out way more voluminous when you take it down. And I really, really like this mousse a lot for this because some mousses can tend to be too heavy or sticky for a braid out in my opinion, but this one worked perfectly for it. So I highly recommend trying this one out. It has plum oil in it, which is really nice and lightweight. It's not too heavy. I actually applied a little bit too much mousse on the first front pieces. I did like four pumps when I could have just did two pumps. As you can see, I only applied them to the braids. So don't apply the mousse to your roots or your ends, only apply it to the braids. So now I'm just gonna be hair pinning my braids and basically creating a head basket. And you don't wanna use bobby pins for this because that's way too much tension on your scalp. You want to use hair pins. And I'm just basically taking the front pieces and pulling them underneath the back braids and securing them with a hair pin. And I'll show you guys up close in a minute exactly how I'm doing this. So front braids go back under the back braids and then the back left braid I'm bringing under the back right braid. Um, so I'm taking my hairpin and you want to push the hairpin towards wherever the section is brushed. So this front section is brushed forward. Um, you don't want to apply the hairpin in the opposite direction that the hair is going because you're going to cause breakage. So as you just saw, that hair in the front is brushed forward. So I put the hairpin in forward. And then I'm just going to sleep with my silk scarf. You can sleep with the bonnet if you want, but I just feel like a silk scarf is more secure. Okay guys, now for the fun part, the takedown. I'm gonna be taking all four of my hair pins out ever so slightly. You don't wanna rush doing this. You don't wanna rip your hair out. Even though the bobby pins come out so easy, they just slide right out. That's why I recommended using hair pins instead of bobby pins because bobby pins can sometimes be way too tight. And I actually noticed as I was getting ready to do this that I left a whole piece in the back out. It didn't even make it in a braid, but whatever. I have enough hair to mask it. So when you're taking your elastics out, if you are using rubber bands, I recommend either popping them or just unraveling them slowly. Don't just rip them out because you're gonna cause breakage like that and rip some of your hair out. So the hair oil that I'm gonna be using is this Whey hair oil. This is one of my favorites. It's really lightweight. It has a nice rose scent. Um, so you want to use a lightweight serum, I would recommend, because if you use a heavier oil, then your hair is gonna feel greasy. So a lightweight oil or a hair serum, it's where it's at to me when taking down a braid out. So I'm not gonna touch it yet. I'm gonna just take each one down before I just shake my entire head. So. I just take each braid down and then leave it until I get ready to shake and separate them all together at one time. So now I'm just gonna take any excess oil and put it in between my fingers and just go into my roots and shake my hair out. So this basically, you guys know, gets rid of the parts so you don't have like parts showing in the back. I'm just going in and shaking the roots first because this just speeds up the process in separating 
the waves and getting them nice and separated and making the hair look more voluminous. You can add oil as you're doing this or as needed. Um, so that's based on preference. So I'm basically just fluffing my hair. You can use a pick or a comb. I like to use my hands because my hands still have oil on them and this just ensures that my hair stays nice and shiny as I'm separating the hair. Look how soft and bouncy this is. Like the products that I use, the combo was comboing, okay? Um, so I will have a full list of all the products that I used. My hair was so freaking soft and bouncy and voluminous, y'all. So a braid out is not just a braid out. A braid out is products, a braid out is technique. So I hope you guys try this out. Let me know if you guys do. I will be happy to know how it turned out. I did finish off my edges with some of this Brio Gio Style and Treat Plum Oil Style Stick. And this was my first time actually using one of these like wax sticks because I didn't think they would work for me. But this one worked great on my edges. This is perfect for a style like this because sometimes edge control can kind of like make your hair revert depending on what's in it. But this is really, really nice. It wasn't too greasy because I assumed that it would be greasy, but it wasn't at all. It did a great job at smoothing down my edges. And yeah, so that completes this tutorial. I hope you guys enjoyed it and I will see you guys in the next one.